हाय गाइस हम क्रांति संभव वेलकम टू टाइम ड्राइव पॉडकास्ट एक नई शुरुआत बिकॉज एवरी टाइम वी कीप टॉकिंग अबाउट डिफरेंट न्यूज व्यूज रिव्यूज and some other info on cars and motorcycles but this time we have uh, changed our format a bit hamare paas ek bahut hi khaas guest hai aaj akhil rabindra who will be talking to akhil and uh, try to understand a new form of uh, racing especially for me or maybe uh, many enthusiasts who ki hum sabhi you know we are fans of uh, moto gp formula 1 but kai baar hota hai naye format mein especially jaise gt4 ki baat hai bahut sare logo ko nahi pata so uh, we'll discuss that but before that mai ek aur news bata do i got my you know first dose of vaccination and before all the you know after effects come i want to finish this conversation with full energy and uh, aap logo se bhi request please go ahead and jahan bhi mil raha hai start please aap vaccines so all guys now let's start this uh, uh, conversation in today's podcast or formally my invite karta hu and welcome karta hu thank you so much akhil uh, for talking to us taking out time for us and uh, this is something as uh, you know i said in intro also the form of racing which you were doing the season you were doing is not very common in india how did you uh reach that stage or that uh, more that that uh, form of racing and uh, what all happened where are you right now uh, our friends and viewers would love to know about that firstly thank you very much for having me and uh, it's great to hear that you got your shots and you're fully safe um you know india is going through a tough time and i think we all need to protect ourselves uh, uh that's the first thing we can do and then try to help as much as we can to other people uh yes as you rightly said um uh, gt racing is a bit different um it's no it's not uh, formula 1 it's not uh, rallying uh, i think uh, people in india um their knowledge about motorsports is is far less than say cricket or any other sport and every time they they relate racing is they related to uh, formula cars or form formula 1 mainly you know very few people even know there's formula 3 and formula 2 which exists um and um, and you know some do also no rallying which is you know they call it off road driving and so on so a G- gt racing is really interesting because um i think once you explain it to someone the relatability is very high uh, i say that because uh, end of the day gt cars are cars which are made by manufacturers uh so it's the shell of a car you would buy but you know the chassis has been fully race prepped the transmission is race prepped the engine is race prepped uh so it can withstand the extra force loads and also have safety standards so um the past two years i've been racing for aston martin so you know if you if you if you go to the shop if you go to the showroom and buy an aston martin the car which i race will be there which is the aston martin vantage um so when we and you see a lot of gt racing you'll be like oh that's that's an aston that's an audi that's a ferrari that's a mclaren so it's it's a similar car and also i've been a bit lucky and fortunate that um there has been a very interesting movie which came out i think the last year which is a ford versus ferrari and um and, and you know some people have seen it i'm like uh, have you seen that movie and they'll be like yeah so that's that's a gt car uh, that's the formula 1 of gt i'm in a bit of a lower level so then like and they get an idea so yeah i mean at the end of the day it's still four wheels uh, has a steering and it goes pretty fast uh, so it's still racing and it's still really fast and uh, if you talk about the track and uh, duration and uh, you know uh, and the rules how different uh, would you consider gt from uh, other you know uh, mainstream i would say people uh, you know races which we know more about how different it would it be yeah i think that you you uh, you hit on a really good point so formula 1 as we know is you know it's a certain amount of kilometers and depending on the track length uh, the laps of that track will vary uh so you can if it's a very long track it'll have lower laps and if it's a very short track it'll have more laps if i'm not wrong i think it's 300 or 500 kilometers so in gt racing the interest and it's only one driver in formula 1 the same person who starts finishes um in gt racing is interesting because uh, you can have a sprint race which is 1 hour uh, but even though in whatever format you would you would all you would most likely have two or more drivers so the sprint race would be the shortest with 1 hour but you would go you you could go all the way up to 24 hours uh with three drivers yeah, and uh, you also mentioned 24 hours so that that must be yeah. uh, you know uh, very demanding physically so what kind of uh, fitness regime you have 
yeah so it it is definitely demanding you know it's it's one of these sports where you know people one who don't understand it and who who don't know about it think it's very easy and it's not physically demanding and i think that comes from you know i drive a road car uh, and i go to i go to place a to place b i've done you know highway driving and whatever not and i know i don't get tired uh, you know i can drive 5 hours 6 hours and dri- drive in traffic and it's not tiring um then my my only <laughs> comment to those people and not trying to offend them is you know there's a difference between a commercial jet pilot and a and a fighter jet pilot right they're still sitting in the same place operating the same thing and the same thing is flying and going but the speeds are different uh, the g forces are different and hence their uh, fitness levels are different into if you you know park your car outside on a sunny day uh, and you come back and you cannot open the windows or put your blinds you know the car be very hot inside this little bit same thing whatever the temperature is uh, outside we have to be a few degrees higher inside and ob- obviously we have a racing gear we have a helmet and everything mm-hmm. which is another many kg so we we sweat a lot um which uh, which makes it difficult after you know driving on or to us um uh, but that's what we train for to make sure we are sure so in a, in a stretch how long do you like in a stretch you do what two hours three hours so again that can depend it um, okay. is is i mean racing has so many variables it can depend on fuel it can depend on tires um it can depend on the situation you know um, um if you, you know you i think you would there's basically a stint is basically and if it's a 24 hour race like i said a driver does 8 hours right so one driver could potentially go up to 4 hours with stopping twice uh, but that rarely rarely happens you know uh, you would probably uh, go up to um, uh um uh, maybe 2 hours that that's, uh, that's what the time is like i said you know there's a safety car which comes on right. and starts raining or anything you would want to uh, take advantage of the situation and now coming to your uh, personal journey uh, how did you you know uh, why did you choose gt4 or gt racing and how did you reach there um so you know i um, ever since i will say i you know uh, i started racing very late um when i say late about 13 years old a lot of my peers uh, and a lot of the upcoming races have started um, when they're like 6 7 so there's a bit of a head start of you know 6 years 5 years depending on when they started so we don't come from a racing family we don't come from a motorsport family so i was all very new to us and we kept learning uh, along the way and like um, like most people when you start off you want to go to the highest fastest uh, league in the world which is formula 1 um but the unfortunate thing is i did go up to formula 3 and then make the switch to gts uh, for a, for various reasons uh, um one is i think one of the main reasons is also the financial uh, backing because it's a very expensive sport uh, as you can imagine uh, and and the probability of making it to formula 1 where there's 20 drivers um who are not getting replaced every year one or two are getting replaced and so those one or two there's a pipeline of uh, 10 20 um uh, this is basic uh, math but uh, um then we went we we discovered the gt world where there is you know like 10 to 10 to 12 different manufacturers and they all have factory drivers junior drivers academy drivers where um, uh, where they're racing so the i can say the population on the top to make it um is a bigger pool in gt other than in 20 in formula 1 and uh, you did racing uh, here as well in india also yes so i raced um, i mean so the abcd the racing is go karting so i've done a lot of go karting in india for 3 4 years i did a bit in asia too um i did do uh, do a lot of the racing also this is cars and formula cars and then and once i basically raced everything in india i moved over go to the uk which is uh, considered the hub of racing to uh, 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 continue my career and uh, uh, you mentioned money a uh, monetary aspect also so any new racer who would i mean you also said that you're not from a racing motorsports background your yeah. family was not into motorsports so you, all those racers uh, what's your number one number two uh, you know tip or uh, suggestion I think there's two things you know there's one which is an on track advice i would like to give them and second is an off track advice I think the on track advice is you know focus on karting uh, that's your fundamental that's your abc's uh, if you can get your karting right uh, in whichever car you jump into right your formula 1 formula 2 rally car gt car uh, uh, prototype car it will work it will really help you uh, so it's really important to emphasize getting that technique right uh, um 
and getting that base set so whatever you get into in the future it will be easier to adapt and learn second thing is you know like i said it's it's been an expensive sport um it it has it will and, and it has it is and it will be um so really focus on i would say your your presentation skills your marketing skills on on how to go and raise sponsorship end of the day you are you are selling yourself so that helps uh, uh but you're trying to get a get a company get a person get a brand on board to back you and and you're trying to sell the dream and more than anything you know it's the art of negotiation and convincing so and if you know if uh, it depends on your social economic background you know um you know i've done I've, i had to raise money uh, i i have got got, got uh, personal money so i've done, got a combination but uh, the more you you're able to you know sell get get sponsorship money and make brand out yourself um it will help you down the line because the numbers uh, keep doubling uh, all the way to formula 2 and it's it's some it's some serious numbers when you get to formula 2 that's very precise and very useful uh, demarcation but on track and off track suggestion what he has given uh, and a very very valid and uh, in a very uh, you know uh, precise way that get your carting techniques right and also understand how to you know raise money uh, work on your marketing and uh, personal uh, branding front also so uh, now the last question akil uh, your future what are your uh, thoughts and uh, what are you aiming for and where should we uh, you know catch you next so my aim is uh, simple and is very clear for the last few years i want to make it uh, uh, to being a factory driver like i mentioned a factory driver's day job is you know you're employed uh, for example say aston martin right your day job is to go race you know they can send you to whichever part of the world wherever their car is racing their gp car like i said the universe is bigger so there's ch- there's championships in australia to to the us europe and everywhere else in between so they basically they appoint you to go race and your sole job is to win and and get the car as many podium championships and all the brand high uh right now on that ladder i'm i'm say i'm on the third slot where i'm an academy driver So my next, uh, uh, my next aim or next uh, spot to get into is the junior driver, which is a little bit in between. Where I'll have similar roles. Uh, um, once you 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 perform as a junior driver, you make a factory driver. But like like we all know in any sport, uh, um, there's always a team. Uh, there are always people who are fixed in it. And uh, you know, even in uh, even in GT racing, even there are like five, six, ten factory drivers. uh not all of them are uh, you know stepping down one shot you know one or two step down or, or more like one step steps down and there's a healthy pipeline of 5 to 10 waiting so it's always a fight it's always wanting to prove and in today's world um uh, fortunately unfortunately being good at your sport is is one slice of the pizza uh you can be the fastest guy but you still probably not get the opportunities you need to be um i think the very fancy word i would like to use is you need to be an appreciating asset for the team so you're on your 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 building value and uh, appreciation for yourself and them so then you know if this if, if on paper you're similar to a lot of people then they'll still pick you over others fantastic so uh, again uh, using your your uh, expression only uh, both on track and off track you need to be uh, you know a fierce fighter if you want to succeed yes. in this mode so thank you so much again and uh, best of luck uh, we hope to catch up uh, soon and and, uh, and uh, we'll keep an eye and all our viewers would request all of you to you know keep an eye kahan par aage ja rahe hain kya kahan ka race jeet rahe hain and do uh, send in your you know appreciation whenever you uh, see him winning thank you so much akhil and uh, good luck